All right, so I'm going to talk about the bean torso. Um, this is another kind of shorthand for the torso of the body just because it's kind of good to gradually work our way into a more complicated setup. To be honest, the Proco video covers everything that I'm about to talk about, but just that we are treating the body as if it is made up of two tennis balls or two ovals connected inside of a, a flexible skin. So like he uses uh, tennis balls and a sock, which is fine. I always thought about like the flower sack from uh, classic animation uh, exercise of a flower sack or like, I don't know, actual bean bag chair or something like that. Just a little flexible kind of pill or bean. Okay. This does not look like a person's body, which is fine. The reason that we're drawing it is because it is the simplest kind of flexible form that we can conceivably draw and we can use uh, human poses as a reference for drawing it. Okay, uh, I went ahead beforehand and just turned on the quick poses library and just did a whole bunch of them to try to get some likely candidates for drawing from but I was really striking out here they gave me lots of flat ones and ones where you can't really see very much. I can probably intuit where the, the bean would be placed inside of many of these, but they're not, like that one's terrible. Like there's no twist, no bend, no anything. This one's okay, but it's really subtle. This one is completely unusable. So it was like very difficult to get good poses, but I'm gonna endeavor to do this anyway. But first I think I'm gonna do it with just without any poses at all, because we don't really need them to, to get the basic idea. Try to make two <clears throat> roughly equal sized right balls, one on top of the other, and then allow for a little bit of a dip in the skin. So you're kind of just making a peanut, right? You can allow for a little dip in the skin like that if you want to. If it's straight up and down, pretty much should. Uh, if it's not straight up and down, you can stretch it out a little bit more like this, but try not to make the, whoa, I did something weird with my, tool. Try not to make the center part fatter because that wouldn't really make any sense. Okay, once I erase away, I gotta stop hitting the button on my tool because I'm making my, my tool freak out. There we go. It keeps going to like zero opacity. When I use Photoshop, there are different hotkeys that I use and so I'm getting confused. So try to make sure that it looks like at least semi reasonable in shape and try to make it kind of attractive as far as just a drawing of a peanut goes. By attractive, I just mean like, don't um, don't have very, let's just do this really quick. Don't have very sharp transitions between the shapes like this, right? That doesn't really look very organic, does it? Okay, it makes it look like a dog toy or a bone or something like that. And so attractive can just kind of mean like aesthetically or as if it's made of flesh or something like that. This just doesn't look, I don't know, it doesn't flow, for instance. It doesn't look pliable, it doesn't look soft. So try to make sure it's pliable and soft. Notice that I'm drawing every single time I draw. Some of you guys are doing some bad habits where you're not using any guides whatsoever uh, or you're not using enough guides. Use guides, please use guides. Please draw lightly and then draw more heavily over the top of those things to true up your lines. I can't stress enough how important that's going to be going forward because looking at your homework, uh, some of you are trying to get it in the very first line or you're hiding all your guidelines or something. Don't do that. Okay. So just without any poses to refer to, um, let's try to bend this. Okay. So basically I'm just going to try to do that. That means that these ovals probably need to align with this line of action, right? And they can cross over a little bit, that's okay. okay? Now, there's my, my rough drawing of the pose I'm gonna make. I don't have any wrapping lines around these because there's not really any twist happening, so sometimes we could leave that out. We could just assume that that's what's going on inside of those balls. But if we want to make them appear to be coming towards us or away from us, then we do want to find the center draw a guideline, and then draw an ellipse and find, okay, that's the front of this one. Here's a center, here's a guideline, there's the front of that one, so that we can get more structural three-dimensional feel to it. 
if you feel like you need to practice that every time, that's perfectly reasonable. I leave it off sometimes because unless it has a part to play in the pose that I'm drawing, um, I just skip over it. Okay, so here's the rough. Draw over the top of this. That means there's going to be a stretch on this side because these two points, right, have moved apart. So the skin, right, is going to be smoothly moving over that surface. Now, I don't want you to do this, right? The round part goes bonk, straight over to the next one. That may be true sometimes in the body that you get this much taut skin pull but it's not going to make it look like a bean it's not going to look pliable in general don't do it in a real body there's going to be guts and stuff in here that's going to push out anyway so generally it's not going to be so useful to make a, a really strict straight line like that okay so there's my outer bend now what do we do here well this side ends up being a pinch right i've got the two ovals kind of overlap uh, overlapping and so we are going to actually have a sudden reversal here, but then it looks a little bit strange because we need to pick which one of these things is in front. Is the top one, which would end up being the rib cage, is that in front? Or is the bottom one, which would be the pelvis, is that in front? And whichever one is in front, we're probably going to extend that line just a little bit more to create this kind of fold, right? This little fat fold or this little flesh fold in there. Then we can finish up that, finish up that, and we could move on to our next one, okay? So that's the basic procedure that I want you guys to use. Sketch in where the two different balls or different um, shapes would be, and then try to connect them with plausible looking skin. Something you can do here, uh, if you want to, if you feel that, that it's warranted. Do I have an eraser? Oh no, I gotta, I wanna shrink my pencil just a little bit. There we go. Um, you can put in additional folds here if you think it's warranted like that. But be careful not to go too crazy. Like that one was probably a little bit too long. I'm gonna shorten that just a little bit. Probably something like that to kind of simulate fat creases or skin creases. Um, don't go crazy with it and always try to follow the forms. The form should dictate what happens. In the case of this, what happened is that there was flesh that would have gone up here, okay? Flesh that would have gone up here was pushed out of the way shoved that way and so where did it go outward sideways okay so being pushed out of the way meant that it has to extend out a little bit from the side of the surface and if i were to complete it then it would probably go all the way over here somewhere to create like a full little tube roll right and it would also go back here back behind that form as well remember everything's three-dimensional so it would create a little croissant roll back there uh, if these things bent a whole lot, then this might fatten quite a bit, like this. But that would require that these things pinch a lot harder to squeeze that much mass out of the way. Does that make sense? Anybody completely lost already? Cool. Okay. Let's stretch it. Okay, I'm gonna just give it a, a nice C curve and say that what's going on here is for some reason, maybe they're reaching their arms up and they're stretching their legs down, but this thing has thinned out and therefore these pieces have moved apart from each other. So I'm gonna draw a elongated oval, right? And another elongated oval. And usually these don't need to wander away from each other too much. They're gonna to almost touch in this case because I'm giving it quite a lot of stretch, but I'm also, remember, lining it up along this action line that I drew first, right? So step one, draw this line of action. Step two, draw these shapes, okay? So in this case, we're gonna get a pretty subtle stretch in the side there. And since this is the pinching side, maybe slightly more just like this. And again, I didn't do the three-dimensional part of figuring out where the wrapping lines are, but it doesn't seem very important unless I wanna communicate right now that they're bending away from us or towards us. What did I decide in the last one? This one was the front line and this one was the front line. Okay, so in this one, I'll just say that here's the center, there's the line, that this person is angling their whole body away from us like that. And so in this one, probably just slightly less. I'll just make it right there, okay? So to a certain degree, you can decide this after the fact. Tilt is probably the least important uh, when compared to like, 
the positioning size and shape but you do want to think about it occasionally so here's one that looks like it's stretching way up okay um, let's squash it this is something that would be impossible in the body but it's just a good kind of example I'll give it a, a, a small bend in this direction but this time I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna draw it fatter and shorter but not very because this is not anatomically sound anyway okay and I'm gonna draw the other one fatter and shorter right on top let's try to get a little bit more bend than that just a little bit like that notice that I'm trying to keep them roughly the same shape and size this one is about this tall this one is leaned over but it's still about the same size um, you should try to make sure the top and bottom are about the same size both of these are stretched but they're stretched approximately the same amount okay so these ones are squished I'll just say right away I'll make the the top one the one that's um, coming towards us the one that's on top and is there anything else I even need to do with this I mean I could create more fat folds I could make one going all the way around this time like this tends to be um, a little bit more acceptable to people if you don't just put an entire ring around it like that in the case of skin uh, because we know that this is continuously connected across this whole thing if you just cut off a ring like that it looks like it's some other object so sometimes you can leave just a little bit of, of space there just don't complete it and same thing with this part I may not complete that either so that we can feel that this is skin being attached all the way across and we could do that down here I'm feeling pretty good about the the rough shapes that I made don't really need to do much extra but let's put in there's a center line there's a center line how much rotation well we'll give it quite a bit and this one slightly less there okay so squished stretched bent okay those are some of the basic things that you probably are going to want to do although remember this one this one doesn't ever happen your rib cage is not going to squash your uh, your pelvis is never going to change shape at all um, and the only thing that's going to squish is like the the meat in between right your stomach is going to squish and stretch uh, your guts can move around your muscles can move around but this is just an exercise okay this is something to get us prepared to draw in the more complicated three-dimensional way that we're going to have to do to construct the figure okay so let's do something more useful let's do twist because twist is really tricky okay if you've got the upper body and let's just do a more normal one the upper body facing this direction and the lower body facing this direction what do we do to draw that Okay, this poses a problem. We've got to figure out what lines are we going to connect, what lines are we not going to connect. We've got the eggs here, and I've, I've just kind of put them on an imaginary line of action like that, just saying that they're twisting. Uh, and I could even put in like a little meridian line here, like here we go. Here's our little belt. And in fact, you know what, I'm going to have it bending away from us, so let's do it overhand like this. But that didn't really help very much, okay? If this one's on top, <clears throat> one side of this thing got closer to us and the other side got farther away, okay? With this one twisting in this direction, right? Which side of this upper egg got closer to us? The left side or the right side? Yeah. So if we draw that perpendicular line through like this, here's the left side here's the right side that right side went behind it's farther away okay this is what you have to figure out to draw the twist whatever side became closer in this case the left side that's the one that's gonna have the overlapping line to help us identify the twist that one's gonna overlap the other one uh, on this bottom one it's facing this direction right what got closer to us the right or the left right. the right side so we draw in that perpendicular line find that surface point this one's coming around the front that one tucked around behind so in this case this side is gonna overlap slightly like that okay then you kinda just have to complete the egg so once you've got that little twist go up there go down here Okay. 
Can I see that? Does that sort of look like a twist? Hopefully. It kind of reminds me of those like S's that people do. <laughs> what is it like? What is that? It's it's this, right? Um, there, there's like a whole like YouTube video about like where this thing came from and the fact that like everyone all over the world knows how to draw it and nobody knows who made it up. Yeah, it's a little bit like that, isn't it? <laughs> it's just like hypnotic that everyone knows that. Um, let me get rid of it. Yeah, everyone calls it Stussy, but it has nothing to do with that company. Like, I don't know. I, I That's what I was taught to call it too, but who knows? Anyway, whatever's the close side, that's the side where the stuff is going to overlap, right? So this side is stretching over top. This side is the side that's coming towards us, so it's stretching over the top. Some of the problem though is I drew these lines a little bit too severe, and so it kind of looks like it's been flattened like a pancake first and then twisted right around. And so I'm going to lessen those just a bit. So let's get rid of those lines entirely. See how that has no form at all? So instead of making it go here, I'll make it go there. Okay. See how that softened it significantly? So you've got some options here. Um, if the thing that is stretching over top is a fairly structural thing like a, like a tendon, then maybe you do want to have this harsh line with this other piece coming out behind it. If it's not, if it's soft and fleshy, it probably needs to S-curve back in the direction of the new thing so as to soften that transition. Uh, and you may even want to lead back into the, the form with a slightly more tangent line like that. Okay, so twisting is going to be one of the tough things. Um, when you get around to like bending and twisting at the same time, do your best. You know, it's gonna it's gonna get really really complicated at that point. Okay. Uh, any basic questions about drawing this peanut, this bean, before we look at some figures? Good. 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 Okay. Here's what's going to help us with these figures. We need to determine what the line of action is, but we also need to determine what is the tilt and lean for the rib cage and for the pelvis. So at this point, we need to start learning about some landmarks. Landmarks are those things on the bodies that only move with the skeletal structure in general. There are some that move with the flesh instead, but they're reliable enough to determine where is a center line or where is a, a planar change in the body. Uh, so let's look at this guy that with no shirt first. Uh, you can see his collarbone pretty clearly. The collarbone each side can move independent of the other side a bit. So we can't just draw a line from one side of the collarbone to the other. We also can't use the shoulder connection from one side to the other because you can shrug your shoulders. But we, what we can use is the center pit of the neck. Now you might say, well, what use is that, the center pit of the neck? Well, that's the center of the front of his rib cage. Okay, so we can use that reliably. We could also use, if we could see it, um, the sternum, which on guys at least is a nice flat structure right in the middle of the rib cage, uh, and on women is obscured by their breasts, but cleavage more or less starts there. You can't really rely on that though, depending on breast size. Uh, we can also use, however, the tips of the ribs, which you can oftentimes see. You can probably see this one on the right. The one on the left, um, guarantee it's about here, and their relationship to each other never changes. The ribs don't drift away from each other or towards each other. They don't, um, they don't do anything except for just basically hold onto the rib cage. The rib cage can shrink and compress and uh, expand a little bit, but it's pretty negligible. Um, and so if we can find the tips of the ribs, we can determine a line here that, that can show us the lean of the rib cage. And in this case, it would be right about there. Um, with the three of them, a line going straight down like this, and this line going perpendicular, we can find the twist and bend of the and lean of the rib cage. Uh, the navel, surprisingly enough, is a pretty reliable one as long as the person isn't like very overweight or pregnant. 
Um, the navel is almost always right in the center of the abdomen. In fact, it is always right in the center of the abdomen. It's just a question of the, if the abdomen bulges out a lot or not. So as long as the person doesn't have like a bulging abdomen for some reason, the navel can be a fairly reliable measure of where the center of the stomach area is, which is very close to the center of the front of the pelvis typically. But more reliable than that, we've got one very nice hip cleft right here, which this is going to be the hip bone down here. That's actually the oblique muscle on top, but you can see how it's squishing. It's squishing because he's leaning on this hip, and so it's getting pressed by bone, and we're getting a cleft there. So that's one hip bone. The other hip bone is going to be somewhere right over here, slightly lower than the right hand side. If you can see those uh, hip bones, then those are very reliable measures of the lean of the lower body. Okay, so using those things, put this over here. I'm going to try to make the bean for this guy. So all of those things together, maybe I should describe this with him on screen. All those things together, I can see a bend in the upper body that goes approximately this way. Okay, so a slight C curve going this direction. We're passing straight through the navel, right? Trying to go straight through the super, super sternal arch, which, or notch, sorry. Super sternal notch, which is what that's called. Down through the navel, right? Down through the center of the pubis, which would be right down here. And I'm using the hip bones to anchor that, the tips of the ribs, which if they have a name, I actually don't know it. Uh, and to a certain degree, his collarbone, but since he's not shrugging, it's a little bit more reliable. So let's put that off to the one side. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm gonna to try to get is just the basic bend, which I think is more vertical on the bottom, more tilted over on the top. And if you exaggerate this, that's just fine, okay? We're looking to get these observations, not looking to get super realism with this. But with that said, I do think I went just a bit too far. We'll go right there. Okay, so something like this kind of bend. Um, I also like to oftentimes just give myself a line to represent like how far over the thing is leaning at what point. So I at least saw that and this. This one wasn't too far off level, but it was leaning to the left. That one was very far off level. And then for the tips of the ribs, they were about right here somewhere. So if you need to use those to like actually draw them out, then you can. The next thing I would want to determine is how much twist is there? Uh, if I were to draw an oval, an imaginary oval right here where his rib cage was, which was what last week's assignment was, is this notch and the center of his sternum right in the center of that, or is it off to one side? Can you guys see that? Is, this, is the notch off to one side of this, or is it right in the center? It's off to one side. Yeah, which side? Uh, our right. Our right. Okay, so that means I'm going to need to draw an ellipse and make sure that I locate the center off to the right, which means he's twisting to the right up there. How about with his hips? If we drew an imaginary oval right here and tried to draw an imaginary line straight down through the center, would his hips be swiveling to the left or the right or not at all? Ever so slightly to the left. I would say to the right because this is where the pants are coming undone. And they're slightly to the right. So I would say slightly to the right also, but so negligible that you could just put this one right in the middle if you wanted to. So for the sake of difference, I'll put that one right in the middle. Okay. So the top one, uh, let's draw the eggs in then. So first egg, right about here. Remember, try to keep them about the same size. Don't worry about the proportions of the model. Second one about here. Okay, then for this top one, here's the center line. And I'm gonna make an ellipse that moves it slightly off to the right, like that. Wow, that was a terrible ellipse, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Okay, so that's the center slightly off to the right. We could also figure out the up and down tilt, like if we're looking up into his skeleton, uh, or if we're looking down into his rib cage. We're clearly looking down into the pelvis area, but I think we're looking straight across at the rib cage. Sorry, I said skeleton, didn't I? It's all skeleton. So for the whoops, twist a little bit, for the uh, upper part at least, 
I felt like we were looking pretty much straight at it. So I'm just going to put a straight line across and say that's where the center of this is pointing. Uh, for the bottom though, we were definitely looking down into it. So I'm going to put a small ellipse, okay, which means the front is right here, right in the center, because I didn't twist it left or right, but it is pointed down just a little bit. Okay. Does that stuff have a bearing on this? Well, for this exercise, not exactly, because he's doing just a very slight bend. Okay, but let's connect it up. Okay, so we've got this bit. This is the side that's pinching, but it's not pinching very much. So I'm gonna allow it to come in and then just kind of curve back out again like that. But on this side, this is the stretch side, I'm not gonna allow for as much of that. Connect it up, connect it up, okay. And yeah, that's about it for this one. Um, I could erase out, okay, let's use that one. I could erase out parts of uh, my construction just so it's a little bit clearer what I intend. Okay. But that's about right, you know, not really very much pinching happening down here, but that's kind of what we saw in the first place, okay? And we would kind of see it in him too if there was enough pinch, we would start to see rolls. We only really see it with this oblique muscle. All right, let's try another one or any questions about that. This one's good. Let's do this one. So this one's coming towards us, but it's also bending enough to cause some creases in his abdomen, which is really good. Uh, can I like open in full screen? How do I do this? Open link in new tab? Sure. That do it? No. Can I press F to call toggle full resolution? Yeah, but does it? I, don't know. I, I hit the key and it didn't do it. <laughs> no, I did. Well, I just want to zoom in. <laughs> I don't care if it's full resolution. I want to zoom in. There we go. Okay. So easiest part of this to figure out is just how much bend is there in this entire body. Hopefully you can see there's a pretty strong amount of bend over to the right. Okay, so we're going to model that first. This one was a subtle bend, right? So here we go, stronger, just like that. Um, taking a look at it. Yeah, that's about right. I'm trying to make sure that this direction didn't go too far to the right, and that this one went much, much farther over. Okay basic size of these two pieces, right? They're almost always gonna be the same for this exercise. So we just need an egg that's leaning over this way and an egg that's leaning over this way. Easy. We'll worry about the twist second. Okay, one like this, and one like this. Now this time I'm gonna allow for quite a lot of overlap because we've got these wrinkles, okay? we're going to need somewhere to put these wrinkles. It's not going to make sense if the eggs are too far apart. So in general, the more bend you have, the more these things are going to overlap unless you're looking directly at the side. I'm also trying to make it similarly sized to these previous ones so that it looks like the same, um, the same bean is bending in a different way now. Okay. It'd be a good exercise for you guys to try that. You can actually see that most of these wrinkle lines are going this way, right? because this is the thing coming towards us, the rib cage. So if anything, those are the parts that are going to be in front most of the time. But let's look at the twist, okay? This is the center of that sternum that I was talking about before. And it's really hard to see his rib cage because he's got lots of muscle over top of it. But in general, it's sort of just to the side of the, the serratus muscles, which are those ones right there. Those washboard ones that you kind of think about. Uh, we can't see his collarbone at all. We can't really see his hips at all, but the belt at least gives us some indication. And then the navel being right there kind of gives us an idea. Uh, what's sort of interesting is if we scroll down to look at the legs, knee, knee, and you can see the feet are positioned towards us and almost all the way away from us. That means he hasn't really rotated his hips at all from a standing position that was facing to the left. Uh, when I block off the upper body, can you guys almost imagine that he would have been facing to the left? Hopefully. So that means there's a pretty severe twist here coming up this direction. 
So we've actually got an S bend. Okay. When I first drew it, though, I drew this big C, right? Because that's what the body was doing. Well, if it's an S bend, right? It's just because it's wrapping over different sides of these balls, right? Rather than going over the left and the left, the upper body, it's coming off the right. So we've got left then right like that. And that's what's making that really strong S bend in this. It doesn't really change the position of those things. It's just going to affect how we rotate it, okay? So for this top one, center point, I'm gonna rotate so I can do this more easily. Perpendicular-ish to the direction that I drew that. And then I want a rather deep oval because I saw a lot of uh, perspective on this. He's leaning towards us, right? So that means this line, the left-hand line, is the one that um, we need to darken it. But we also need this one because that's the actual twist. This one's just the lean, or the coming towards us. We need the twist. So I'm going to put something like this. Try again. Something like that. Yeah, that's all right. That's pretty good. Okay. And so this line and this line together make it kind of facing this direction, like way lean down and kind of towards us, which I fig figure is uh, about right here. You know, this is like where his rib cage is aiming. It's kind of down to the right here, not where his head is aiming, okay? Uh, let's do the same thing for the hips, okay? So for the case of the hips, kind of go in that direction. Here's the center point, that direction. I feel like we're still looking down into the hips a little bit. So I'm going to make a, a kind of thin uh, ellipse like that. And they are aiming to the left, if anything. So let me zoom in. And I'll do a slight ellipse to the left. It doesn't need to be a very severe one like that. And if we were to complete, it would come around there. OK. So that means this direction, that's where that's going. Okay. So what does that matter? Um, well, that means that this side of his upper body came closer to us, okay? So that means it gets to overlap a little bit, like this, okay? That's what that affects. Um, this side over here for the, the um, pelvis is the part that's closer to us, which would mean that it gets to overlap a little, except for that this thing is completely bending forward over the top of it. So it doesn't really get to do that. Okay. We start to complete this like that. I'm going to allow this to stretch just a little bit more like this, just a little bit. Okay. And darken in the lines that I like. I like that and it would make sense at this point if I wanted to put like a fat fold down here remembering that it would kind of run down and around back to there okay or skin fold however you want to think about it uh, but sometimes when you do it like I just did that it looks a little bit strange I need to make this line less severe if I'm going to do that let it run a little bit farther this direction so we could do something like this if we wanted to Oh, that's far too harsh, let's see. Shrink this tool just a bit. There we go. And let's go back. So we could do something like that. I find it starts to look grotesque if you do this too much though. So in the case of this guy, maybe we just have a pinch. Something like that. And let's get rid of a lot of this construction detail now that we don't need to see it so clearly. So I can see just the beam that I drew. Um, slightly dissatisfied with it. I think that what I need is some of the evidence that this thing is overlapping by maybe putting in a line or two like this. So I could put a small pinch there. Let's get rid of that just slightly. And then, yeah, I think that one was a little bit too loose. There, like that. So now I'm 
I feel like it feels a bit more like he's bending towards us just because I put in like some extra little folds there. But the center is still right here, wrapping around this direction and this direction. And the center of the pelvis would still be here, wrapping that direction and that direction. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. And just so you guys are aware, right, I'm, I'm choosing pretty complicated examples to give kind of the worst case scenario. A lot of the times this is not nearly so hard. Like if we get, um, well, there is some rotation there. Some of these are going to be easier. Like that one's going to be pretty straightforward. It's just a C bend backward. Uh, let's see what else. Well, this guy, we can't see him very well, but just a very slight bend to the right, maybe straight. This one's completely straight. She's probably arching her back towards us, but we can't see it very easily, so we don't really need to draw that. Um, let's see, how about this guy? The angle is weird, but it's just a backward C-bend, and everything's completely lined up. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, this one's like basically completely sideways to it. It's just a backward C-bend. A lot of the times, it's going to be pretty easy. Okay. So the, the bean itself is going to represent the waist and like the chest area. The entire torso. Okay. So to be clear, this is not something that we use to realistically depict the, the human body. So these things don't really look, why can't I rotate my, hey, my rotation tool is like gone for some reason. Um, this is not something we use to realistically depict the human body. Um, it is just kind of a stand in for a simpler kind of torso. And so don't think of this as necessarily having to represent rib cage, hips, and guts in the person. It's their entire torso as if they were like a Mr. Peanut bean character. Okay, so it's not them, but it's what their body is doing. Does that make any, any more sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't I rotate my stupid thing? <laughs> Come on. What did I do? I think I must have hit some hotkey that messed me up. You're going slow. Hmm? Like, some of the software here might take uh, some time to... Oh, my computer's real good. It's not its fault. It's my fault for sure. Never blame my computer. My computer's great. <laughs> Always something I did wrong. Anyway, do you guys need any more examples, or is that pretty clear? It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So don't change the proportions of the bean based on the person, OK? Don't make shorter, fatter beans for dwarf guy. Don't make longer, thinner beans for her. Just do what the body is doing. Her body is more flexible, right? So the beans should be more flexible. But if you can manage. The best way to try to do this is try to make it look like the same thing, just sh just moving differently each time. So the proportions of this one, this one, and this one together, hopefully they look like the same object, just doing different things. Okay, And if I did my, my stuff right, these three should look like the same object also, but doing very different things, Okay, as in the same amount of mass and the same basic proportions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So endeavor to do that if you can. It is a little bit difficult, but that kind of consistency is really good practice anyway. Okay. The video, of course, is going to have a really nice demonstration in it, you know, and hopefully that will make it straightforward once you guys watch that. Uh, assignment 20 of these using photographs of people. Draw the bean to closely mirror the bend of the real body without attempting to recreate the details of the body. Okay? And yeah, that should be it for that assignment. Um, Mr. Craven? Mm hmm. Can you think you can give me a, a, another example of the torso bean? Yeah, of course. Uh, when I'm going through this library, do you see any in particular that jump out to you, or do you just want me to pick one? Or 
is it too small? How about this one? Mm. Yeah. Will that work for you? Yeah. This one's kind of nice because her costume has center lines built into it. Um, you can see right here in the center of the sternum this ring. That's going to be right in the center of her rib cage. This one's approximately at navel, and you can kind of see right under the belt, like here is like the center of this rope structure. All of that's like the center. And so we've even got these wrapping lines. If you imagine this being completed, um, this is one of the wrapping lines that's going around her body. This one would be, but it's obstructed by her breast, so we can't really use that one as reliable. Um, the navel one we can, and the belt one we kind of can as well. So to do this as an example, I moved the image on the other screen. There we go. We're back. Um, I would first try to get the bend of the body. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit try to get the bend of the body, which in this case is a nice medium kind of C bend like this. Uh, then place in the two eggs. So one here and one here. Okay, approximately the same size. Uh, then I'm gonna try to determine the twist and the bend of them. So here's the center point on the top one. I appear to be looking slightly up into her rib cage on this one. So I'm going to give a ellipse like this and then darken in this line because that's the part that we would be seeing. So it's tilting that way. Okay. And then for the other direction, oh man, up oh, there it goes. Oh, I was using the wrong key, space bar and shift, geez. So here's this other line. Um, clearly everything was far over on the right hand side. So I, I could even just pick a point here, but let's draw the ellipse anyway, like that kind of go in this direction. So that's the center line of the rib cage. Same thing down here. Here's a spot. I'll do this one first because it's about the same. There's that ellipse traveling that way. And then for the lower part of the body, it looks like we're looking slightly down into this belt area. So I'll go ahead and do this. So it's like that's the point right there. That direction in that direction. Okay, so all of that is just kind of preliminary drawing. I sometimes will preemptively just fade this all out just so my final lines aren't being interfered with too much. And then let me zoom in just a bit more. So we're going to have a pinch on the back like this and a stretch on the front so kind of like that. And I think I drew these eggs a little bit too long. So I'm going to shave off the top of that one just a little bit like that. And just continue darkening in these lines to the point that I like them. Uh, if one of them was overlapping the other, so I could give this pinch some structure. In this case, it's tough call. I think I'll, I'll still go with rib cage, I guess. So a slight overlap like that, okay? But that's about right. There's a lot of vertical stretch in this one and just a little bit of pinch. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I just wanna make sure that these are visible still, right? So that's the center front. That's the center front right there. And probably wanna just darken in those wrapping lines just a little bit. Okay. But this one ends up being this because those underlying eggs kind of disappear. So if she had a navel visible, it would be like somewhere around there. Okay, so we can just connect that through. Probably was a little bit too severe on that pinch, but oh well. Do you need one more? Or are we good with that? I think I'm good with that. Okay. Any questions, you guys? Because that's going to be the recording part of the lecture. The rest is going to be looking at the homework. Cool. All right, let me go ahead and stop that.